Hello everyone, in this video we will be talking about the security market line. So let's begin with our outline for this video. So we will begin by explaining what the security market line or SML in short is. And then we will uh, make a distinction between the capital market line and the security market line. And in the final part, we will see uh, what sort of arbitrage opportunities exist when a risk asset doesn't lie on the SML and how we can exploit them as investors or uh, traders. So there are thumbnails in the video description if you want to jump ahead to a particular section of this video. Otherwise, let's just dive straight into it. So what is the security market line? Well, it is in fact just a visual representation of the CAPAM equation. So to understand the SML, we need to recall uh, this uh, CAPAM formula. So let's begin by that. So the CAPAM formula says that the expected return on a risk asset I will depend on the risk-free rate of return plus the beta of that asset times the market risk premium. And the market risk premium is simply the expected return on the market portfolio minus the risk-free rate. Okay. So this is, if you notice that this is a linear relationship between expected return and beta. And that's what exactly the security market line depicts. So it's the linear relationship between the expected return and beta. So in general, the equation of a line, a straight line looks like this. So you have the Y variable, right? Then we have our X variable, which is beta. We have the slope. So the slope in this case is the uh, market risk premium. Why? Because it's the vertical distance divided by the horizontal distance, but market portfolio has a beta of one. So this is just one. So the slope is simply the market risk premium plus the intercept. So the intercept in this case is the risk-free rate. So just to repeat, the security market line is a visual representation of the CAPM equation. It essentially shows a linear relationship between expected return and beta. The intercept is the risk-free rate, and the slope is the market risk premium. Okay, so then let's try to compare this with the capital market line. So the capital market line is sort of the ending point of uh, portfolio theory, which deals with individual investors, whereas security market line is based on the predictions of CAPM, which deals with market equilibrium. In, in other words, how many investors interact in a market to determine prices of securities in equilibrium. So the capital market line and security market line are very closely related to one another. And the key difference is the measure of risk used. So as we have just seen, security market line focuses on beta, which is a measure of systematic risk. And the reason for that is that according to CAPM, uh, investors will hold diversified portfolios. And within those portfolios, firm specific risk will be diversified away. And what remains is the systematic risk, which we can't get rid of. And CAPM argues that the expected return on securities should therefore be related to systematic risk, right? Because that we can't diversify away, so we need a premium on that. Whereas we don't need a premium on a system, a unsystematic or firm specific risk because we can get rid of that for free by virtue of diversifying. Whereas capital market line is one step before, right? One step earlier than dry, uh, arriving this conclusion. It deals with the decisions of individual investors who sort of come up with an efficient frontier by engaging in mean variance optimization and the measure of risk here is return volatility which is captured by a standard deviation of returns so this is a measure of total risk right and this is a measure of systematic risk so in both cases we have expected return on the vertical axis right but in the case of capital market line 
we have total risk, whereas in the case of security market line, we have systematic risk. And there's one more important difference to note here as well. So in both cases, we have the risk-free rate and the market portfolio, uh, and both of them lie on these two lines, right? But how about individual securities? So in the context of capital market line, individual securities, so think of this as a single stock, they lie below the capital market line because this is a measure of total risk and you know the we don't necessarily need compensation for total risk, so we don't expect a, a linear relationship between total risk and expected return for individual securities. We only expect that on this particular capital market line. Right. But security market line says something different. It says that all securities, so not only market portfolio, not only uh, the risk free rate, but all individual securities must lie on the security market line because the measure of risk is beta. And in a second, we will see what happens if if this is not the case. Right. So to summarize, capital market line and security market line is are related to one another. In both cases, market portfolio lies on these lines. Okay, so here market portfolio is essentially the tangency portfolio. This is the original efficient frontier. But the difference between the two is the measure of risk. And in the case of security market line, all individual risk assets lie on it. Whereas in the case of capital market line, we only have efficient combinations of the market portfolio and the risk-free rate uh, that lie on this line. Otherwise, individual securities lie below that. And this brings us to the uh, final part of uh, our video, where we will see how we can exploit arbitrage opportunities if actually some securities uh, lie off the uh, security market line. And they can be above or below, right? So here we have three stocks. Right. So we would say C is correctly priced. OK, so this is correctly or fairly priced. Correctly priced. Because it lies on the security market line. How about A and B? So both of them are mispriced. So in the case of A, the expected return of A is higher than what is predicted by CAPM. Oops. So we can have, for example, something like a synthetic A prime portfolio here, which has the same beta, right? Uh, so according to CAPM and secured market line, this should be the expected return, whereas this A itself has a higher expected return. So this is, in fact, underpriced. Okay. And this creates an arbitrage opportunity. So what investors would do to exploit this is the following. So they will go um, uh, long in uh, stock A, okay, because it's underpriced. So go long in A, and then they will create a portfolio uh, that has the same beta as A, right? Based on, for example, a stock that lies here, maybe another one here, and so on. It doesn't really matter, but essentially a portfolio that has the same beta as A and that is correctly priced, and you would go short in it. Okay, go short in A prime. So this would create arbitrage uh, profits. And as uh, arbitrageurs engage in this activity, many of them will be purchasing A, and this would put upward pressure on the price of A. And as investors purchase A, uh, its price will start to go up. So its expected return will go down. So A will sort of drop uh, back onto the SML. Okay, so through this projection, it will fall back onto the SML. And this will eliminate the uh, arbitrage opportunity. How about B? Now we have the opposite scenario. This is overpriced. Why? Or over, you can also say overvalued. So you can say underpriced, undervalued, or overpriced, overvalued. The reason is that given its level of beta, this is a stock should have uh, had a higher expected return. So then we would try to form this B prime portfolio. So we would 
go long in B prime and go short in B. So you can think of that short selling to create a, a generate arbitrage profits. Again, as many investors do that, essentially there's downward pressure now on the price of uh, B. So as the price of B goes down, because these future cash flows are kept the same, so its expected return will start to increase, and then B will sort of start going back onto the SNL. So this is the uh, uh, no arbitrage um, argument of CAPM. So it says that in a competitive market, securities can only lie off the SML temporarily because this would create arbitrage opportunities. And as arbitrageurs take advantage of those opportunities, uh, the, that opportunity will be essentially self-destructive. So the actions of the arbitra arbitrageurs will help uh, price uh, pricing efficiency. And that's all I wanted to say about the security market line. Hope you have enjoyed the video and hope to see you guys in another video. Bye for now.